What's going on, Cloud Scholars? I hope your day is going well and I found you in good spirits. My name is Kieran Tross, and I want to thank you for visiting the page. I also want to say a welcome, special welcome to those as your first time visiting Cloud Scholars. So one thing I want to do is talk about what's the topic for today, which is passwords authentication using YubiKeys. So there are a number of different ways to do password authentication. We're going to focus on the YubiKeys. And the one I have here is YubiKey 5 NFC. There's a bit of a glare right there, but I'm just going to bring it there. Yep. All right. Now it shows. So that YubiKey 5 NFC, I'm going to uh, leave a link in the description. I purchased it on Amazon uh, just so that you all can follow along if you want to go and try it out yourself or you're probably looking at your organization like, okay, how can we uh, give our organization more strength? How can we uh, monitor these resources and make sure that, you know, we might have some resources that are specialized that are highly confidential and we're not like, yeah, we don't want to just do multi-factor authentication. We want to take it to the next level uh, due to all the recent ransomware attacks that are happening and will continue to happen within our modern society. So um, I think it's really important what I'm going to show you in this video. Um, I'm going to use the YubiKey 5 NFC and I'm going to also uh, do some more stuff with it, not just utilize it, but I'm going to do it with uh, uh, authentication strength. So we're going to do some fun stuff of, you know, confidential data and say, okay, you can do multi-factor authentication for this, but in order to access these resources, you need to use the password authentication because ain't no hack in this, right? So that's one of the ways that we can go about uh, securing our environment and making things a little bit more secure. So I'm really happy. I'm excited to present this video to you. I don't want to keep talking anymore. I want to get to the portal so I can show you exactly how we go about implementing these things. All right. Okay, so this is our agenda for today. First, I'm going to talk to you about why is a YubiKey important. Then we're going to jump into a downloading YubiKey Authenticator app and show you exactly where you go to download it. Um, then next, we're going to register our YubiKey in the YubiKey app uh, which the, from the download. Then I'm going to enable FidoKey in authentication methods in Azure. Then after doing that, I'm going to register our FidoKey to our user in Office 365 portal. And then finally, we're going to set up the YubiKey with Azure Authentication Strengths. So I apologize if you wanted to just kind of jump into the um, uh, setup for the YubiKey Authenticator uh, within the Azure portal. I will get to that. Uh, but I, I want to kind of just talk a little bit about why it's important for the YubiKey, import, uh, the YubiKey uh, device. Because some people may be new to YubiKeys. They, they probably never heard of it before or understand exactly why you want to use it. So with the YubiKeys is extremely important because they're phishing resistant. And what do I mean by that? So you can have the Microsoft Authenticator app, which a lot of people use. Um, they do have the Authenticator app with the number uh, matching, plus it shows the app that you're logging in from and the location, which is really great. It's a new feature that Microsoft uh, enabled uh, within uh, for the environment for their customers. But what I will say to you is many people aren't really using it. Um, it's still, I believe, in preview mode, and I actually have a video talking about how to set that up. But... Uh, with the YubiKeys, it's so important because when I say phishing resistant is, uh, so let's let's just say we have a scenario where a user logs in, um, a user's account is compromised. When I say their account, I'm talking about the social media account, any personal account that they're using, Gmail account. Let's use that one for this instance. And user uh, account is compromised and they're using the same password uh, for their social media as they use for work. Or if it's not the same, it's a different variation. So it might have a number change or whatsoever because you're having passwords change every 90 days. Now you, as the administrator of the organization, you did your job. You said, okay, I'm going to do multi-factor authentication. But here's this user using the same password. And then they get compromised. They don't even realize it. And then the hacker says, okay, I have your information, but where do you work at? Okay, let me go in your LinkedIn, find it out. What's the name of convention of the company? Find that out sign in there you go they're into your organization and then when they sign in with the first factor authentication the second factor authentication obviously is the azure app and the user who you know she or he is working and she has a lot of emails coming in he has a lot of you know i don't know he's in a conference call or whatever he sees the authenticator app goes he doesn't think twice and then he just clicks okay and then now the hacker is in so that's why we say by efficient resistant. So this is one of the reasons why the YubiKey is so important. 
So let's jump over to the YubiKey page so I can show you exactly, uh, YubiKo page, I should say, so I can show you exactly where you would go to download it and kind of just walk you through their page. So when you get to the Yubico page, you just go to yubico.com. Uh, you can put it in your uh, search engine and you should be able to find it. The first thing that comes up in this is Yubico Efficient Resistant Multi-Factor Authentication. It stops account takeovers for the world's largest organization. So I literally was just going through that whole thing. But this page is really great. They have a lot of good information. This little device here is also water uh, proof. Uh, so that's just something else for you to uh, realize. And it's actually pretty sturdy. So if it does get, you know, dropped on, stepped on, um, it'll, it'll still work. So I just kind of want to put that out there for you just so you understand that. Um, so, you know, true fission resistant MFA, um, which is really great, um, protecting, uh, protecting from human error. So this is, they're, they're literally saying everything that I was mentioning um, before in this video. So let's talk about downloading it. So let's go over here to products and you're going to go to UB Code Authenticator. And then once you go to Authenticator, you can just click this Download Now. And this Download Now will bring you to a, uh, a area where you have a bunch of different options. And this is, you know, obviously you're going to choose what's germane to you. So for me, I have a Mac. So I would go to Mac uh, App Store or I could download it directly from here, which is pretty cool and convenient. But if whatever you're using, you just go ahead and you could just click on Download. So I'm not going to walk you through the download process because um, it's pretty self-explanatory. But what I will do is the next step that we have in ours is registering our UB key with our Authenticator app. So here I have my Authenticator app open. I have my key plugged in. That's why it's shown right here. And what I'll do is I'm going to add an account. So when you go to add an account, um, they have the steps as well. Um, and I'm going to put that in the description. And the great thing about this website is they should really show you about using your YubiKey with authenticated codes. It says, you know, what it's compatible with and incompatible with. It gives you all this stuff. But it says it talks about setting up YubiKey Authenticator uh, 6 point for your desktop. And it kind of just walks you through this whole process here. But don't worry, I'm going to actually walk you through it. But I wanted to let you know that it was on the website as well. So for issue, we're going to type in Cloud Scholars. For the account name, we're going to just call it no password one. That's our username. And then for the secret key, I'm going to put my password in. Um, this scan QR code is if, if it's uh, presented to you from your job and you have a QR code here and you have it on your screen, you can just scan it. Um, but we obviously don't have one. And then right here, you can say require touch. So I'm going to click require touch. I'm going to leave it as shy one, which is fine for me. This is obviously just for lab purposes, but you do have other options here, which is shy, uh, SHA-256, and then you have SHA-512. And then over here, I'm just going to click on save. So here we go. We have it, our account here. And if I click on this, it's going to say touch required, which is great. And then I'm going to go there, and then it gives me uh, a quick key that I can use. So that's fine. That is set up. So we have why is YubiKey important? We downloaded the app. We talked about registering our key in the YubiCo app. Next thing we want to do is we want to enable file key in authentication methods within Azure. Okay, now back over at Microsoft Azure, I'm going to go to Azure Active Directory. And over here, I need to come down to security. And then within security, I'm going to click on authentication methods. So right now, you see it says not enabled. So uh, only thing we have enabled is Mark, uh, or Microsoft Authenticator. So we're going to go to FIDO key, and we're going to click on Enable. And I already went through testing this out, obviously, um, before I go and make this video. So for Select Group, we already have Finance here, which is great. Um, I'm going to click on Save. But let me come back into it because I want to come over here to let you know that you can exclude certain groups if you want to. Um, and then also in configure, you have a bunch of different options here. So it says allow self-service setup. So you have your users sign up themselves with their FIDO keys with your, when you give it out, which is great. Uh, and for us attestation as well, then you also have the key restriction policy. Now this is really cool because you're able to say, okay, enforce key restriction. And if I click yes, right. Um, it's going to say, you know, add a, a, a G U I D cause it's saying there's at least one needs to be here. And you can now say which keys you want to allow within your organization. So that's pretty cool, right? So instead of having people just kind of go all willy nilly and you know get their keys, you can say, okay, these are the keys that are allowed in the organization, and then you can ship it out to your users. Now, when you talk about distribution, um, 
uh, Fido has this, uh, you can find this on their website, and they really talk about, you know, really with distributing this Fido key within your organization and how simple it really is. So, you know, you configure your optional custom feature programming, which is some of the stuff that I was going through. Then you distribute, provide in person, or ship to users worldwide. And then they talk about really enrolling admins, may uh, pre enroll users, or allow self en en enrollment via web portal. That's exactly what we're going through. And then backup, set up a, a second YubiKey or alternate two factor authentication method as a backup. So I'm going to go through that as well with the uh, authentication method. So you can have a uh, multiple authentication method. Let's just say if you have a text message, and then you also going to have the YubiKey as well. So just in case they lose the key, they're still able to access their documents. And then you can revoke, remove users access when they leave. So this is a great documentation here. Um, just to kind of show you exactly this whole cycle and how everything kind of just really managing your identities from the cradle to the grave um, is really essential um, during this time um, period right now where people are just getting hacked all the time. So we're all set with this so we can click on save. And then we have our one group, which we're going to use. So next thing we need to do, if I'm correct, is we need to, uh, we enabled FIDO key authentication method in Azure. So now we need to go to register our FIDO key to our user in Office 365 portal. All right. So now we're in Office 365 portal. I'm going to go to the top right hand corner and I'm going to click view account. So once you're in here, uh, wait for the screen to load up. We're going to go into under security info. We're going to go to update info. Once this loads up, we're going to go to add sign in method. We're going to choose security key and click add. Uh, it's two options. We're going to go with USB device. So take a little while. We're going to get a prompt next, which is going to say set up secure key. Uh, which you're seeing on your screen at the moment, and then we need to put in our PIN uh, in order to validate this key. So go ahead and submit your PIN. I'm going to put mine in. I'll wait for it to give us the OK. All right, now that we've got that signed in, we're going to add, just call this key one. It's perfectly fine. All right, all set. So that's good. So we have our key there. Okay, so we've registered our FIDO key to our user in Office 365. Next thing we're going to do is set up YubiKey with Azure Authentication Strengths. So within Azure, back in here, we're going to go to Security. Uh, we're going to go to Conditional Access. I'm going to go to Policies. So what we did, we already went through our authentication methods and we already set that up. So what we need to do is we need to create a new policy and we're going to call it uh, FIDO authentication users. We're just going to do a select group and we're going to go back to our finance. We're going to click select on that one, cloud apps. And we can do all cloud apps. We can do select cloud apps. We're going to say, all right, for Office 365, uh, you need to sign in this way. And then for conditions, device platforms, we'll just configure that for any device platform. And then over here for grant, this is where we get to do the cool stuff. So over here where it says grant access, we're going to do the require authentication strength. And then over here, we're going to make sure that we go to fission resistant MFA. And then we're going to click select. And then from that point on, we could do our sessions. We could say, okay, sign in frequency. We could do, let's say, eight every, every eight hours that they need to re authenticate. And then we could enable this policy. You could put it on report only, so on and so forth. We'll just enable this policy. We'll click create. All right, so here we have our FIDO authentication is there. It's the bottom one on the list. So, um, oh, actually, I should have changed the name of it because I said I'd like to do the three. So I'll just do 3A. I think I have a dot, but let's do save. So it's just easier to read. Oh, I have three. All right, I didn't have the, the dot there. So 
it just makes it easier to read when you do it this way and i'll click save and then here we have it at the bottom which is fine so all right the rest of these uh, it's just a little different but over here you have 1a 2a was associated and you can have your 3a phyto authentication and uh for whatever group uh let's do finance and we'll save it so all right so we're good there so now i'm going to sign back in under that user and let's see what happens All right, I just put my pin in, so I'll see what happens after that. Make sure I'm able to sign into it. Touch security key again to complete request. Sorry, I took a little while to read that. Stay signed in, I'm gonna click no. All right, looks like we're in. So I am in within the 365 portal and I was able to sign in using my uh, FIDO key. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over to the Azure portal. Um, and let's go into Azure Active Directory. We could go into sign in logs and we can see exactly what conditional access policies were applied to that user. So right here we have multi-factor authentication. This is our no password user. And if we go to conditional access, we can see right here, uh, this one was also on it as well. So this user is a part of this one as well. That's why it gave me that password it was asking for, but it also gave us this 3A FIDO authentication sign in frequency. So you see that that was successful. So I took the user out of here. It wouldn't have given me uh, the request for the password because this is just for multi-factor authentication. But this one here was the reason why it was asking for the FIDO because it was saying, hey, you need to sign in using the FIDO according to the conditional access policies. So we have it all there set up. Um, one thing I also want to talk to you all about before we end this video is the UB Code Manager. So the YubiKey Manager, not UB Code Manager, sorry about that. The YubiKey Manager is a great tool to use as well as also with the Authenticator app for the um, uh, YubiKey. Uh, this one is really good. So if you run into any issues or anything like that, you go to your FIDO key, you can change your pin and it will say a pin is set, eight retries are left, and then you can reset it. So let's say for some reason you're at the Azure portal or our users have an issues and they put their pin in incorrectly a bunch of times, they have to use the YubiKey manager to reset it so that this way that they can start utilizing that same um, YubiKey again. You may run into that issue that you need to troubleshoot. So I just wanted to put that in there as well. So as always, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. Um, took some time making this video for you um, and I really appreciated it and enjoyed um, providing you this content. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I am more than happy to respond to your inquiries or is something that you're just not really getting with the FIDO keys or you're running into some issues yourself, please um, uh, send, them, send them my way. I'm more than happy to help you out on your path. Um, so as always, um, here at Cloud Scholars, uh, our goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.